Aloha mai kako. Welcome to Halau Napuahala Kuno Kai. This morning, it's Saturday morning, and it's April, what, 9th? April 9th today. And boy, you'd think we'd have it figured out by now, but Facebook keeps changing every time we try to sign on. It's like, oh, you got to do something different. So sorry for signing on just a little bit late if you're joining us. Hopefully you're catching us either live or watching the replay of this video. It is April, which means it's time for us to gear up for our biggest hula day of the year, at least for us here at Napuahala. Our um, favorite day of the year is May Day, which is May 1st, and it is right around the corner. I know um, the schools are gearing up for their May Day performances. We have a few of those, and mm -hmm. our halal is also gearing up for our performances. Um, even even the, the dance studios have, have performances coming up. So now is the time for us to show all that we have learned so we have one last hula that we're sneaking in here. It's May Day is Lay Day in Hawaii. That's what we're covering this month. And also um, kind of sharing a little bit about our love for the beautiful art form of lay or lay making. So without further ado, I think it's time. Aloha ho my welcome back. Every week on Saturdays, we start our class the same way. Uh, we have a little routine of chants and prayers that we do, and we always start with our anthem, Hawaii Pono'i. So go ahead and ku iluna, stand on up. We'll do all three verses of Hawaii Pono'i. Pa. Hawaii Pono'i, na na i komo'i, Kalani ali i he ali i makuala ni e kame ha me ha e na kawa e pale me ka i he. Makuala ni e kamehameha e na kawa e pale me ka i he Hawaii i pono i e kala For that. At this time, we always move on into our Oli Aloha. But before we do our Oli Aloha, we want to know who we're saying Aloha to. So I know that some of you have joined us online. It's so good to have you folks. I know on YouTube, we have Rose. It's good to see you. And I'm glad we got to meet face to face on Zoom the other day. I have Angelica Damaro Aloha from Kelamania, Germany. Nice to see you. Jamie, all the way in San Diego. Aloha. 
We also have Lily Noi Iwana all the way in Italia. That's Italy. So good to have you, Lily Noi. I love when you join us. Also, Barbara Underwood jo- joining us from the big island of Hawaii, also known as Mokuo Keave, Island of Hawaii. Aloha no, Barbara Underwood. Abella, le aloha. Carol, aloha from Kaleponi. Thanks for signing up for our Lay Day. Um, Le Aloha. I'm so glad that you're going to join us for that. We have the Mana Hula Circle Ohana over in Yapana, Japan. Aloha no. And yes, I did receive your registration. More information will be sent to your email soon for Lay Day. And I also see Wit and Aileen over in Kane Ohe. Aloha to our hula ohana all around the world even if you haven't had a chance to drop your comment down below maybe you're watching the replay of this because you're practicing for upcoming lady feel free to leave us a little note we love hearing from you so aloha mai kako welcome and we're glad you're here at this time we're going to greet everyone around the world from japan and germany and italy and right here in hawaii ne with our Oli Aloha written by Kumu Pilahi Paki. This is the long form of Aloha, Oli Aloha Pa. Akahai na Hawaii, lo kahia kulike, olu olu kamana o, ha a ha a kokulana, aho nuyalana kila. Aloha mai na Hawaii, ke aloha no kau me anui. E o mai na Hawaii, na pua lei na mamo. Ala mai e kalahui, laula e kaulana. O mai e kalehulehu, haaheo o e Hawaii. Ano ai no ke aloha. Ano ai no ke aloha. Aloha. At this time, we will continue on with our prayers. So for our prayers, we always know how Ilalo have a seat on the floor or on a chair, if that's more comfortable for you. My kumuhula le momi i maldonado always had us noho for this section of our, our um, routine, right? So for all of the prayers, we kind of lower ourselves to practice ha'a ha'a. So here we go. This is our Hawaiian doxology, ho'onani. O onani kama kua mau ke ke ki me ka uhane no ke a kua mau o o mai ka ipu ko ke a ko ke. Our second prayer that we do each week is called E Kia Kua, and it's done in the call and response style. So I will be the leader, and Inz will be the meho uh, pili, the follow alonger, and we are going to do E Kia Kua. Okay, so here we go. E Kia Kua Pa. E Kia Kua. E Kia Kua. Mahalo no. Mahalo no. Mahalo ya oi. No ke ya la, no ke ya la. Ah mene, ah mene, ah mene, ah mene. Mahalo for that. That prayer says thank you for this beautiful day and 
friends. It is a beautiful day as usual over here in Hawaii. We're coming to you from the valley of Nu'uwanu on the island of Oahu. And it's pretty much always beautiful here. I hate to say it, sorry. Um, but we always like to ask. So that means how is the weather? So e kalania kea pehea kiani la. Ay, hela malie kea. Not too much wind. Hardly any clouds. It's just a calm, beautiful day. So I know you folks must be getting sick of how beautiful it is here, but we live here every day and we're not sick of it yet. So <laughs> at this time, we're going to do our prayers, uh, not our prayers, but our chant to rise up the sun. We have, have mostly sunny skies, but we want to blaze through those clouds a little bit more. So let's do our eala e. We're going to do it three times straight through with our um, pattern of cup cup clap it's also known as upoho upoho pa'i ready one more yala e here we go e ala e kala i kahinkina i kamuana kamuana ho ho nu bi i kaleva kaleva nu u i kahinkina ai akala e ala e hana ho again go e ala e kala i kahinkina i kamuana kamuana ho ho nu bi i kaleva kaleva See if you can memorize it. Go. E ala e kala i kahikina i kamuana kamuana ho ho nu pi i kaleva kaleva nu u i kahikina ayakala. E ala e. Very good. You have it memorized. Easy peasy. Good job. All right. At this time, we're going to move on to our chant, which helps us to kind of focus our energies, focus our thoughts on learning about mele and hula. This chant was written by Edith Ke Kuhi Kuhi Pu'u Oneona Ali Kiyoko Hala Kanaka Ole. I just love saying her name. <laughs> this chant says, please grant us the knowledge from above concerning the hidden wisdom of songs and chants. Please grant us these things. So here we go with Eho Mai three times. Pa. Eho Mai Ka Ike Mai Luna Mai E O Na Mea Huna No E O Na Mele Eho Mai Eho Mai Eho Mai Eho Mai Ka Ike Mai Luna Mai E almost out of breath that time and i started in a weird key sorry about that but i hope you all caught caught me on the on the upper key so that was our a home at this time we're gonna go and and get our ipu and my ipu is actually um someplace else so i'm not sure where i'm gonna get an ipu maybe up there i will go see it but Ims, can you go grab grab your ipu and daddy's gonna go grab my ipu while i grab my pale oh you got yours? Okay. So the ipu is a hollowed out gourd and um, it grows from a little tiny seed. You plant it in the ground. There she is. Okay. Enter Hina. Okay. So <laughs> it grows from a little tiny seed. You plant it, cover it with soil, needs a little bit of water, a little bit of sun, a little bit of aloha to grow up and sprout out. Then the vine comes out, the flower blooms, the flower dies. After the flower dies, you have left behind the little fruit of the ipu. And then from there, it could take up to nine months to grow to a full size ipu. So just like a baby. This is my, this is my baby. Yeah. Oh, this is my baby too, by the way. This is my son, Eames Kalaniakia, my real baby. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do our mele to make our ipu. It's called mele ipu heke ole. 
Hana wau i ka ipu heke ole, pa. Hana wau i ka ipu heke ole, i ka ipu heke ole. Hana wau i ka ipu heke ole, i ka papa hana no e ao. Hana wau i ka ipu heke ole, i ka ipu heke ole. Hana wau i ka ipu heke ole, i ka papa hana no e ao. That's it. That um, beat that you heard us do just now is called the ku ku beat. And you see it there on the bottom of the slide. Ku ku is u u u te te. Let's try that same beat again. One, two, ready, go. U u u te te. U u u te te. U u u te te. Last one. And stop. Now you'll notice when we do the u hitting on the pad, we do a little bit of a ruffling of the fingers. That is what you see at the top of the slide. It says ka eke loloi. Ka eke loloi is an ornamental beat, and you, it's not necessary. It's not required, I should say, especially for young, um, young keiki. It's a little bit harder to do, but if you're gifted and talented, then you can do it. So let's try that ku ku beat one more time with the little ka eke loloi. Ready, set, here we go. That's one. And two. Three. Last one. And stop. Now, if you just take that last utete beat, that is called the kahela. And that one is right in the middle bottom of this, this slide here. You see utete. So let's try just the kahela beat four times. Ready? Here we go. Utete. 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 Okay, very good. Now, the last beat that we haven't touched today is called the pa beat. It's P A with a uh, kahako over the top, not okina. And the ute, ute, it's kind of single beat. Let's try it. Go. Ute, 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 and stop. Very good. So, all of our chants that we do are usually some combination of those beats right there. For example, you know, Merry Monarch is coming up very soon and you're probably gonna see lots of people dancing and the beats that go with it depend on what feet work they're gonna be doing. So like for our style of Ho'opuka, it starts off with the Kahela Pa beat. So let's try Kahela Pa beat. Ready, set, here we go. Just like that. Then the next part of ours, right? We're going to step, 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 step for our choreography. So we would get the pa beat. Let's try four pa, ready, go. And then the next part of our choreography calls for kahela beat. Ready, go. So you see, depending on what steps the hula dancers is to do, then we will do different beats with the ipu. Or to say it another way, the boss of the hula is really the ho'opa. Whatever beat we do, that that um, dictates what step the hula dancers will do. Hey, Nina, call. You have a question. In, um, in our other class, uh, we do a different beat and different beat. That's right. That's right. So, um, in Eames hula class, which is meets on Fridays, they do a different step. They do kaholo for the whole thing. So, for the whole ho'opuka. For chanting, it would be a different beat. It would continue that beat all the way through because they do kaholo for their entrance. Yeah. So anyways, just a little bit of information about how the ipu is related to the dance. Yeah, It's not just in isolation. It really actually informs what the hula dancers are going to do. So when you're watching Mary Monarch in these next coming uh, weeks, uh, check that out and see if you can match the beat to the feet and something like that. Beat to the feet. Beat to the feet. All right. Let's put our ipu away. We have lots to do. So put your ipu away and you can go ahead and cool iluna. Or you can try. Ooh, okay. Ooh. All right. As I mentioned, it is April. And in the month of April, we love to celebrate lei. And the reason for that being is that. May Day is May 1st, and I always feel like May Day is here and it's gone. It's like one day to celebrate Lei, that's just not enough. Mm. So if you've been following along with me for the past couple of years, you know that for the entire month of April, I 
wear lei, I make lei, I give lei. And so um, like last year we had all, do you have that slide still with all of the pictures? Maybe not. We showed it last. There it is. Oh, where'd you go? Stand on your tippy toes so they can see you. Okay. So these are just actually some of the lei that I wore last year, April, through the month of April. So I shared some you know, um, shell, lays, seed, lays here. You can move back and then they can see you back there. There you go. <laughs> so you see um, all different types of lays. This year I'm continuing that tradition and um, I, I have a slide that shows the lays that we've worn so far this uh, month in April. So you see a lot of the lay that I shared this week were done in the kui style. Kui means it's sewn with a needle or um, some sort of thing to pierce through the center of the flowers. So like this one on the top, the puomelia, the plumeria, is done in the kui style. This is a gift actually from um, Sharon, who's, I don't know if she's watching today, but one of my ladies, Sharon Al Curtis, gifted me that beautiful hybrid plumeria lei. Um, you see two pua keni keni, and you're going to see a lot more pua keni keni because we have a new pua keni keni tree that we planted here on our property, and it is it is just going gangbusters. So you're going to see lots more pua keni keni this year. Um, down here, this is an old picture, but this is also in the kui style. This is the kukuno kalale. Um, I was wearing the kukuno kalale when I met my now husband, Im's daddy, Uncle Luke, who's behind the camera. So this is actually a picture of the day that we first met and i was wearing a lei kukuno kala um all the way on the other side you see that purple lei i wish you could zoom in on it but it's actually made of sea urchin spines also sewn in the kui style yeah and then um on the top up there that one is a, a lei pikake but it's um it's actually made of like an acrylic yeah, so that one is is kind of like a full peacock lay, but it's one of my cherished, um, I, I call them ever ready because they never wilt. You know, you can wear it any day. And then on the other side, uh, you see the lay hala on my lay po'o up there. And that one is also an art artificial lay, but the hala lay is one that's very special to our school because we're known as na pua hala. Yeah, the one in the center that you see there, that one is actually done in a vili style, a wrapped style. And we're we'll talk a little bit more about that style maybe next week or another time. But um, if you stay till the end of today, I'm actually going to do a quick tutorial on a type of lay style that's known as the hilo or the twisted lay style. And that is actually what Eames and I are wearing. This is a twisted lay style. This um, these, this set of lei actually belonged to um, Eames, Tutu, and Papa. And Tutu gifted them to us to make use of. So there's two of them in the set. And one is like a more wahine style, a more feminine style. And one is more kane style. Um, and this one uses tea leaf and raffia. So I'll show you what those materials look like. If you stay till the end of today, that's a little bonus thing. But mahalo to um, Tutu for sharing these lays with us. And it's always such an honor to get to wear Tutu and Papa's lays, especially here for Hula. So thank you for being a part of that. Okay, cool, cool. All right, at this time, we're going to jump into our Hula because I know I've been talking, talk, talking. Um, we're gonna be doing our May Day is Lay Day Hula. And I'll tell you what this is for afterwards, but it's for our, our Lay Day show that's coming up. So you will have a chance to participate in it. But for now, let's review what we did last week. So Mayday is Lady is written by Leonard Red, that's his nickname, Hawk, and his wife, Ruth Hawk. So uh, Red and Ruth wrote this song after they came up with this idea that here in Hawaii, we celebrated all kinds of holidays, Veterans Day, President's Day, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, but we should have a holiday that was just our own. So Leonard um, and Ruth really just loved the people of Hawaii and especially this tradition of making lei, wearing lei, and giving lei to uh, friends and, and new friends, you know, um, maybe someone that you don't know, but to make a new friend, to give them a lei, to sort of tie that bond um, and that relationship together. So they sort of invented this idea of Mayday is Lay Day and wrote this song, which has been cemented in tradition of May Day and is the song that you hear in every school, every halal performance and on the radio on May 1st. So this is Mayday is Lay Day. Let's go ahead and Kui Luna stands on up so that we can review hands and feet 
for the chorus of Mayday's Lady. You're going to start with your hands right out in front of you, palms facing down, and you're going to make a tiny little M, yeah, letter M like McDonald's. Then you're going to put your lay over your head just like that. In Hawaii, you're going to make a L-shaped place motion to the right and then an L-shaped place motion to the left. For all of those, you're going to kaholo to the right and left. So one, two, three, tap, one, two, three, tap. Keep that going in the feet. This is a fast review. If you want a slower version, you can go watch last week's replay. Okay, Mayday is Lady. Here we go. Mayday is Lady in Hawaii. Very good. From right there, you're going to bring your hands across your body towards that 45 degree angle. Use your wrist as a guide. And you're going to pick two flowers on the right. Garlands. Then you're going to reverse it to the other side of flowers. Then you're going to show off your flowers. Be real proud everywhere and also over there. <laughs> OK, you can draw them two times across. Then all of the flowers um, colors in the rainbow, you're going to touch on top all of the colors. And then in the rainbow, your two hands are going to dip down and form that nice rainbow right above your head. Make sure you tilt all the chins up so you look real pretty in the pictures. All of that is going to be kaholo step. Let's go from garlands of flowers. Pick flowers, right? Kaholo garlands of flowers everywhere. And then paint across all of the colors in the rainbow. That's it. From right here, you're going to open your hands just to shoulders with reaching up over your head. And you're going to make a body motion, drawing down. Maidens are the young girls with uh, blossoms in their hair. Left hand is going to lock into a small part of your waist. Right hand is going to go behind your head to show off your flowers. Mine are up here today, but let's pretend they're here. in their hair. And then you're going to switch to this side. Okay, let's go for maidens. Stretch two hands up. Ready, here we go. Maidens, oops, kaholo, with blossoms in their hair. That's it, okay? The feet work for this is super simple because we wanted everyone to be able to dance it. From little tiny kiki to old tutu grandmas, um, everybody should be able to dance this hula, okay? Let's go from the top. Mayday is lady. It's all kaholo. Ready, set, sing along with me. Mayday is lady in Hawaii. Pick the flowers right. Garlands of flowers everywhere. Holo to the left. All of the colors in the rain. Oh, body motion stretch. Maidens with blossoms in their hair. Good. Okay, the next part, flowers that mean we should be happy. You're going to reach your hands straight out in front of you, straight arms, but not too straight. If you have um, elbows that overextend, slight bend is good, but it should look almost straight. Flowers, and then you're going to pick straight in front. That mean smile. We should be happy. Yeah, you have to smile with your face too, not just your hands. And then flip them over. That's it. So this is kaholo to the right, kaholo to the left, kaholo to the right. Kaholo to the left. Then lock that left hand back into your waist. Throwing aside our load of carriage. You're going to take your right hand just above your head on the right side. You're going to shake two times. Throwing. Switch. Aside. A load of carriage. You're going to scoop two hands right in front of your chest with all of your cares there. And then you're just going to, ah, who cares? <laughs> just drop them on the ground. Okay. Scoop and smile. No care. Okay, so throwing aside, you're going to kaholo to the right. Throwing aside a load of care. Oh, just like the beginning now. Mayday is lady in Hawaii. Back to the mayday letter M. Mayday, right here, you're going to come to your cheeks. 
in and out, yeah, on the kaholo to the left, is happy face. And then out there, you're going to kaholo to the right with a, your right pointer finger is just slightly extended as well as your left finger. Not like this, but like this, yeah? Out there. And then we start again. Mayday, just from the beginning. Okay? So that's our chorus. We're going to go ahead and dance it with the music before we get into something special. I told you about it last week. Anyways, if you are here last week, you know. Okay, ready? Here we go. Yeah. Sorry. Ready, go. Motion maidens, maidens with locks of right hand in their and left hand. Flowers pick front. Flowers Don't forget to smile happy. So you might have heard right there what's what's happening. There is actually, we're not going to show it to you quite yet, but there's actually two verses that are hardly ever sung. In fact, I only learned about them last year. And yeah, yeah, there's some verses. For those of you that are thinking to participate in our lay day performance, um, you can choose to just record yourself dancing this chorus, Mayday is Lady, and that will be totally, totally fine and welcome. If that is all you can handle to do, um, then, then that's fine. And I wanted to talk just a little bit about that. So you can have a seat. I'm going to talk a little bit about our Lady show, and then I'll get into the, the verse, I promise. Okay, so um, our Lady show is going to be, I guess, twofold, threefold. I don't know how to say how it's many folded multifaceted um our whole ike which is our show this is the lineup of the show and those of you who are joining us from all around the globe some of you have been coming to our zoom um, workshops if you've come to any of the workshops for hawaiian cowboy mauna leo or malie song hawaiian lullaby then you will be receiving information on how you can submit videos of yourself or you can fly to Hawaii, you mean whatever, no big deal. Um, but to submit videos to be a part of our Lay Day compilation ho'iki that we're going to put out online. OK, so we're going to send information about that. If you are watching our Facebook hula lessons like today, we're doing May Day is Lady. That's that last one. That's the finale of our whole show. And we're inviting people to submit videos of themselves and their ohana dancing this mele so that we can put that together as sort of the virtual um, ho'ike finale. Okay? So if you only want to do May Day is Lady and you only want to do the chorus, what we already learned, that's totally, totally fine. I wanted to be sure to acknowledge the people who have already signed up to participate. So they went over to our website and these people, I think there's about 20, I don't know, something, 24, I don't know. There's a bunch of them. These are folks who have signed up to participate, either to come to our in-person filming on the 23rd or to send in videos. And I'm, I'm still going to send you information about how and where and when to send the videos. But these people, I have received your registration and you are good to go. I'll be sending more info soon. We also have a whole slew of Keiki who will be participating. Of course, you see Eames right there up at the top. And all of these Keiki will be dancing at our in-person performance. Um, hopefully, 
they'll all be able to make it. Some of them are gonna in, uh, be submitting videos also. So these are all of our cakey as well as the other people on the other slide, but we still want more because we're crazy, right? Uh, so if you are interested in participating in our whole Ike, head on over to our website, napuahala.com, and you can sign up just to get more information. You're not required to perform, but um, if you wanna know how you can participate, go over to napuahala.com. All of the information is there. Put in your info and we'll be sure that you know how that you can participate in our ho'ike. All right? So now back to our hula. Now last year I asked my dear kumu, Uncle Kimo Alama Kiaulana, one of my fabulous kumu, and he, um, I asked him, have you ever heard a verse to Mayday is Lady? And he said, you know what? I haven't ever heard it. But I know it exists because in my collection, in my library, this is Uncle Kimo, I have the sheet music for this. And he said, you know, I don't read sheet music, so I don't know how it sounds like. I just see there's words here. But, you know, um, he gave it to me. He knows that I read music. And he said, ah, give it a try. Maybe you might like it. So last year I was able to read the sheet music and um, come up with the melody that uh, Leonard and Ruth wrote for the verses. So here is verse number one. This is what we're going to do today. Here we go. So it starts off, land of the flowers. You're going to make an L shape with your hands. Eames, you want to come join me? You're going to make L shape with your hands, and you're going to go towards the right. We've done this like in, in Hawaii, yeah? So land of, then you're going to flip your hands right down there, and you're going to pick flowers, just like we did in the beginning, yeah? So here's how it goes. Land of the flowers, of flowery bowers. You're going to touch on the top. This is the opposite side that we touched before. Of flowery bowers. Good. Then in her great gay dress, you're going to reach your two hands up and you're going to draw down her body. In her gay dress, she appears. She's going to greet her public to the right and to the left. I think they're talking about the lady queen or princess, yeah? So that's who we're talking about. Let's go land of the flowers, make the L shape. Land of the flowers, of flowery bowers. Two hands up. In her gay dress, she appears. Other side. Good. Then from right here, you're gonna cross your hands to your cheeks. A sweet, happy maid. May her dress never fade. You're going to touch your shoulders and you're going to draw your dress down. And then it has kind of a poofy skirt out to the side. <laughs> May her dress never fade. And then your right hand is going to scoop at oh, other, your opposite. Yeah. As she carries this day, we're, we're mirroring you. Then left hand scoops through the years. Oh, and then it goes into Mayday. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Have you ever heard that verse before? Let me know in the comments if you've heard it. And no fair if you heard it last week. I mean, last year from me. <laughs> oh, I mean, you can let me know that too if you've been following along. Okay. So the fun thing about this is it's all kaholo. So this time through, just follow along, hit the kaholo, and follow the hands. Ready? Land of the flowers. One, two, ready, go. Land of the flowers, of flowery bowers, in her gay dress, she appears. Two hands, a sweet, oh, sorry, cross your hands, a sweet, happy maid, may her dress never fade. As she carries this day through the years. My gosh, your arms are getting long. <laughs> okay, so let's try our first verse going into our chorus for Mayday is Lady. I know that was fast, but the replay will be available. You can always watch it over and over. Okay, here we go. Don't forget to smile. And hopefully you're wearing a lei. You should just wear a lei every time you dance hula. Even if it's just practice, why not? Kaholo. Okay, land of the flowers first, first, please. Land of the flowers. Flowery 
Bowers. 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 I don't know. Go Google. Smile. A sweet, happy maid. Dress. Her dress never fades. Right hand scoops. As she carries this day. Left hand scoops. The year. May Day is Lay Day. May Day is Lay Day. Lay in Hawaii. Garlands of flowers. the flowers all of the colors Dip. in the rainbow maidens maidens with blossoms in their hair, in their hair. flowers pick front flowers that mean we Smile. should be happy throw away your cares Good job. job. So next week, I will teach you verse number two of May Day is Lady. But for now, you have plenty to practice. You have verse number one. You have the chorus and whatever other things you're doing for our hula show. Um, all of those other things that I listed. Okay. So I know we only have about 10 minutes. And, and I said that I would give you a little bonus which is to do a little lay tutorial. So we're not going to make this exact lay, but we're going to make something similar because it's going to be made out of tea leaf, which is the base of this lay that we have here. So give me a, give me a moment and we're going to get some of our materials together. Eames, can you hold on to this box? Okay, thank you. And I'm just going to put this down so that we don't make a mess. Isn't this a beautiful pot? This one is um, Aloha de Mele. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to go to our Vavai cam so you can sort of see this. All right, we might want to be a little bit closer. Oh, no, this is good. This is probably good. I might ask you to go take it up there to show them afterwards. Okay, so anyways, our lay that we're going to make today is going to be a Hilo style. Now, I'm not talking about Hilo as in Hilo Hawaii. Yeah, Hilo Hawaii, I love that place. We have family there. Um, but the word Hilo actually means to twist or to turn or to, to make into sort of like a cord. Yes, like a rope. So the most common style of lei that you make in this style is the lei la i. And if you've never heard the word la i before, it's another word for the leaf of the tea plant. So if you um, see these leaves that we have here, these are tea leaf. Uh, T I, um, and in Hawaiian we sometimes call this low ki, low meaning leaf, and K I of course is T. But if you're just talking about the leaves, leaves, the leaves, <laughs> the leaves themselves, um, we can also call them la i, L A Okina I, with a kahako over the A and over the I. I don't know why I'm waving the leaf like this, but you know what I mean. I'm like, you know. Anyways, <laughs> so the la i or the the tea leaf, it grows on a stalk. Yeah, and they sort of grow around like this. I want to tell you when you're picking your tea leaf, please do not use a shears and cut it here because then you leave all of this part on the stalk and then the plant has to figure out what to do with all of that. So when you're picking your tea leaf, you always want to look at the stalk and look at the one on the bottom, on the outside, absolutely. And then whatever is on the bottom, you're just going to grab it. Okay, look, this one is a little bit up. This one is a little bit down. So you would take this one first, right, on the stalk. And you're going to take it and you're going to hold it like this and you're just going to rip it down. Yeah. And so then the whole thing should come off clean. I might have a little bit of dirt down on the bottom, which you're going to clean out. But... You take the whole thing off of the leaf. That way you help the plant to clean it and you don't have all of these little on your on your stalk. 
Okay, so be careful when you're when you're picking your tea leaf. Now, to make this type of tea leaf lay, usually I use about maybe five to eight leaves. And if you don't have tea leaf growing in your area, you may be able to get it from um, you know a florist or something like that. You only need about five to eight leaves, depending on how um, how long you want your lay and also how tightly you're gonna wind it. So the leaf itself does not need to be perfect. If you look at these leaves that we have here, they're kind of green, yellow, even brown. That is totally fine, especially for this type of lay. I actually prefer to use leaves with a little bit of variation in color because I think it gives a really pretty look once you, um, once you weave it together. So don't be afraid to use these leaves. And in fact, when I go around and clean our tea leaf, I love to make lay with that um, because I, I like the color of it. Okay, so once you pick it fresh like this, some of you might know how to debone tea leaf. We don't need to do that for this type of lay. You're going to take your upa, you're going to take your scissors, and you're going to actually cut it right down the center. So Eames, can you hold this side for me? Okay, and so you're going to start from the tip of the leaf, and you're just going to cut along the mid rib. The tea leaf has a hard center portion called the mid rib, and you want to just cut that whole part off. So you're going to take off one half you don't need the the length of the the stem but you're going to get a half just like that kind of like a half leaf then you're going to do the same thing on the other side always great to have a helper and of course anytime you want to make lay you want to make sure you have a nice thought in your mind because if you have bad thoughts or stress in your head the lay is going to come out bad too. I've had that happen to me many times before. Okay. So starting from this, this leaf, you can hold this one up. You, you cut it off. So you have actually three pieces. So you have two side pieces and then the mid rib is separate from that. Okay. So this you can put on the side, save for when your children are naughty. Just kidding. I would never do that. I don't do that. Right? No, I don't do that. Okay. But you can put this to, so to the side. Um, and then you have these, okay? So, you know, if you have five leaves and you have two halves for each, how many halves would you end up with? 10, yeah? If you had eight and you had two halves for each, how many would you end up with? 16. So you might have anywhere between 10 and 16 halves. Now, if you, if you have this, um, let's see, who has the most, is my mic the, the um, strongest? No, 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 no. no yeah. Oh, okay. I just want you to, okay. I just want you to hear these leaves are pretty, what I would call crunchy. Okay. So I want you to hear how crunchy these sound. Okay. Listen. Okay. Did you hear how crunchy that was? I don't know if you could hear that. You want to hear it again? Okay. Here, here's the crunch. Oh, okay. Could you hear that? Let me know in the comments if you can hear how crunchy that was. Anyways, this is not good to make lay with because if you make it with this, it's going to crack. So what you need to do is soften these leaves. One way that you can soften them is put them out in the sun for three days. <laughs> we'll see you in three days. No, just kidding. <laughs> or you can put them in the freezer overnight. We'll see you tomorrow. No, we don't have time for that. You can put them in the microwave, just like he said, um, and heat them. <laughs> <laughs> I did this whole stack of leaves in our microwave for one minute, but you have to see for yours. You don't want them to get crispy. You want them to keep some of their moisture, but you just want them to mie a little bit so that they're soft. Okay. So now I'm going to try to take this by his microphone and hopefully you won't be able to hear it. It just goes. It doesn't go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know if this tutorial is worth anything. It's probably worthless, no, but anyway, okay, we're doing it. We're already here. Okay, here. Okay, very good. Anyways, so you have your, your leaves and they have been softened maybe for one minute, maybe for 30 seconds. I don't know. It depends how, how strong your microwave is. So you got to go check them. Okay, so you want to, um, if you look at my leaves now, you know, they're, they're still kind of glossy. Maybe parts of it are a little bit darker, but they're really nice and soft. In Hawaiian, we call that mai. Yeah, almost wilted. Okay, so now let's get to the business of making lei. All right, so here, move up a little bit so that they can see. All right, so you're going to start. You can put that down. That's not actually useful at this time. You put it Okay, you hold it. Okay. All right. So you're going to take a leaf. And I like to kind of start with, I don't know, a, a big one. Okay, let's try this one. 
This is the one. Okay. Okay, and I'm making a mess over here. I'm actually a very messy laymaker. Some of some laymakers are so neat. Okay, so you're gonna take this leaf that you have right here, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold it, and you're gonna try to find there's a shinier side and there's a dull side. Try to keep the shiny side out, but once you start doing all the twisting, you won't even really be able to see. So here's what you're gonna do. You wanna try one? Sure. Okay. I'll try. Try. There you go. So you're going to hold it and you're going to sort of um, maybe like fold it a little bit so that mostly the the um, shiny side is out. So you're going to fold it like hot dogs. So yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, it doesn't have to be perfect because let me show you what you're going to do after that. After that, you're going to take this and you're just going to start twisting it. So one hand is going to go forward and one hand is going to go back like this. OK, so you're going to go like this twist one hand forward one hand back and you're gonna keep twisting twisting until you get it into a little kind of rope kind of rope okay let's see if i can come a little closer so you can see what this looks like by the way um i don't know if you noticed but on my fabric of my dress that's the same type of lay that we're making okay so you're just twisting one hand forward one hand back one hand forward, one hand back, okay. one hand forward, one hand back, until you get a little piece like this. It doesn't have to be too long, maybe about, what is that, three inches, babe? Three inches-ish? Okay, so you're going to make it, <laughs> yeah, yours is a little longer than three inches. Okay, so after you get this little strand, you're going to keep twisting it until it naturally forms a loop. Did you see that? Watch this. I'm going to like this. And you twist it, and it naturally forms a loop. So you have a little loop like that. Okay, I'll hold it here so you can kind of see what it looks like on the bottom. Oh, that's hard to see. Okay, there. Okay, so you have a little loop just like that. All right. So now I'm gonna need your help. Can you hold for me? Yes. Okay. We'll come back to yours after. Here, put it over here. That was perfect loop. So now you're going to, if you have someone to help you, it's really helpful. They're going to hold over here. If you don't have someone to help with, you can hook this over something, maybe, um, maybe like a, I don't know, something that's going to hold it, some kind of stick. Okay, so hold it like that. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk you through it first, and then we'll come close to the camera to show you. I'm going to take both strands, one in my right, one in my left hand, and I'm going to turn both of them clockwise, maybe, yeah. Then I'm going to take the one in my right hand. I'm going to turn it maybe three times. One, two, three. I'm turning it clockwise. And then I'm going to cross it over the strand on the left. Okay. So now Eames and I are going to come real close so you can see what this looks like, hopefully. Okay. So can I move this way? Cool. Sorry, we really didn't plan this. Okay. So this is my right hand. This is my left hand. The right hand is going to turn one, two, three three nice and tight and then i'm gonna put it over the one in my left and switch hands yeah so let's go a little bit closer they can see it right hand goes one two three cross one two three cross one two three cross pull a little bit more towards you there you go one two three and cross so now you're starting to see it form into a rope yeah i know easier said than done but go get some tea leaf and and try it if it's not coming out too well you can always take it out and start again that's what all of the lay teachers teach you okay so when you get down to this bottom part and you have only short ones okay let me show you what you have to do i know we're out of time but i just want to show you how you can add so you're going to take this next leaf here and you're going to leave the point out, yeah? And you're going to cup it right underneath the other one. So you have it underneath like that. Okay? Then you're going to take both sides of it, and you're going to pinch it around it. I tell my students, make like a little taco. Yeah, the old one is the filling of the taco, and then the other one is the shell. You put it around like that, okay? Then you're going to fold it down. And right there, you're going to pinch where you, where you added it, and you're just going to twist it around the old one until it forms into a new section of the rope. Can you pull it a little bit more so that they can see? 
Yeah. No, no, you're good. And then you're going to cross it over. Then you continue on. Twist, 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 and cross over. Twi- oh, did I twist the wrong way? Who knows? No. I didn't. Okay. And then you can do the same thing with another leaf. See this little tiny piece right here? I'm going to do the same thing underneath. I'm going to make a taco. I love tacos. Okay. Actually, I like burritos better, but that's okay. So we're going to make a new rope. Pull, pull, pull. And now, huh, magically, we have two new strands. Whoa. And we're going to continue down our way. Now, I've done this many, many times, so I'm, you know, I kind of fast at it. But, you know, it takes practice and it takes right now I'm twisting with both hands just so that I can show you kind of a finished product. Uh, but, you know, right now, how many leaves? I guess we've used one and a half leaves. Yeah. Keep pulling towards you. You might need to scoop back a little bit. Yeah. So we have only used one and a half leaves. And we're making our way, twist and cross, twist and cross, twist and cross, twist and cross. Okay? So let's back up so we can show our faces. Oh, sorry, tea leaf. I just smashed you. Okay. So you can let go now. This is what we've made so far with one and a half leaves. And this is kind of similar. It's not the exact same lay, but it's kind of similar to what Eames has on his lay that he has one, two, three, four, five, six strands. And each of these strands is wrapped with something like this. This is raffia that's been braided. So each one of the strands is wrapped with this and then put together into a layer of six strands. So, okay, just so that you know how to end it in case you want to try this and then you get to the end, you don't know what to do. Can you hold this? At the end, you have your two pieces. As long as you have enough, all you have to do is just take this and tie it in a knot. It's pretty resilient, but be gentle, okay? You're just going to tie them in a knot, and you might need to trim this end if it's really long Thanks. like this. But basically, you just tied those two, two sides together, just tied them off in a knot. And if this were a full lay, right now this is like a mini lay, okay? If, if you wanted to, you know, if you have this, maybe you need to trim it. I would just trim it at an angle like this so you have a nice point here. Maybe like that. Oh, that was not good. But okay, so you have a little point there. And then this one, can you hold this bottom? Yeah. And you have a point here. Watch your fingers. Okay. So if you have the end of this, you have a nice knot. You can double knot it if you want, but it might get bulky. Okay. So pretend this is a whole lay. This is a whole lay. You have a loop on one side. You have a knot on the other side, and then this is much longer because you had more than 10 minutes to make a lay, okay? Then you take this little loop right here, the loop. You take the knot on this side. You're going to string it through and pull the knot through and dun 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 There you have your little tiny Layla E. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. Here. Go sit back there. And you can just put it right over his head. Just, just like, yeah. Just like that. Thank you. <laughs> just like that. Okay. Okay. We better stop. All right. Well, that's it. That's all we got for you today. <laughs> Well, joke's on me. Next time, leave more than 10 minutes to make a lay. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed our little lay la e tutorial. Um, and I hope it's helpful to you. And I'm sorry if it is not helpful to you. But hopefully, it made you laugh at least. OK? All right. You have lots to practice. You got to go make a lay or something. Um, until next time. Keep practicing. We'll see you real soon. <laughs> Ahui ho.
Ready? 